Let's quickly put this in a historical context. Successful aerostats had been around for many years before any man-carrying aerodynes were developed. So aerostats, in terms of these hot air balloons, had been around and used for many years. Uh, and those developing aerodynes, or fixed-wing type aircraft, uh, believed that they needed to have enough power to propel them into the air. But there was a man named Otto Lilienthal who thought that actually the power was secondary to first understanding how to control these aerodynes, how to control this fixed-wing aircraft. And so he developed uh, a bunch of gliders. Now, in 1891, he had his first controlled human flight uh, in one of his gliders. And uh, between 1891 and 1896, he actually had over 2,000 successful flights. Unfortunately, in 1896, he had an accident that uh, ended up taking his life. He didn't know that he was fatally injured in the accident, but, uh, but then he died shortly thereafter. And on his tombstone, this phrase uh, appears. It says, Opfer müssen gebracht werden. That means sacrifices must be made. And that was actually a phrase he used uh, throughout his life as well. Well, in, in 1896, word of that crash spread around the world. And, uh, and at that time, the Wright brothers were just starting their study on flight. And so they learned a lot from Otto Lilienthal. Uh, in fact, uh, let's read something that they wrote. So this is on Wikipedia. Uh, uh, here's a page on the Wright brothers. And uh, there's also a page on Otto Lilienthal here. In fact, let's look at a few pictures here of Otto Lilienthal. There he is. Uh, he passed away in 1896, and you can see a few images of his, uh, of his uh, gliders here. Many, many successful flights with those gliders. And, and he really was the one that figured out how to control these gliders. Now, the Wilbur Wright said, of all the men who attacked the flying problem in the 19th century, Otto Lilienthal was easily the most important. It is true that attempts at gliding had been made hundreds of years before him, and that in the 19th century, Cayley, Spencer, Wenham, Mullard, and many others were reported to have made feeble attempts to glide, but their failures were so complete that nothing of value resulted. So basically, the Wrights uh, learned a whole lot from Otto Lilienthal from his work, and, uh, and were able to build on that. In 1900, they developed their first, uh, or had their first successful flight with a glider. Uh, and then in 1902, they had more than a thousand successful flights on a subsequent version of that glider. Between 1900 and 1902, they were uh, improving that glider. And then in 1903 uh, is when they finally had attached an engine to it. And really a large portion of their contribution was developing an engine that uh, was light enough to go on this glider and, and offered enough power uh, to be a, a propulsive unit. So it was that engine combined with the propellers and they, uh, they, they had built both of those, the engine and the propellers, and designed those. So they had their first successful flight in 1903, in December of 1903, and that came after many years of, of them working together and studying the works of other people and, and also branching off and, and uh, doing a lot of their own research. They developed their own wind tunnel. They found that the uh, that tables that had been published by other aviators were incorrect. And uh, anyway, there's a lot of fascinating history here uh, that, that is really valuable to, to go back and learn about. Um, in fact, there's a book by David McCullough about the Wright brothers that I've really enjoyed reading. So uh, anyway, that's just a, a little historical context of the beginning of the Aerodynes. Uh, and after 1903, uh, actually the Wright brothers packaged up their um, their successful aircraft uh, shortly thereafter and uh, packaged it up for a few years until they were able to patent it and begin selling it because they didn't want people to steal their idea. So it was more like about 1908 or 1910 before that really came out in public and, uh, and they started doing demonstrations around the world and selling their, uh, their aircraft. And then obviously uh, a lot of things developed after that very rapidly um, aviation began to grow and uh, nations became interested in it, pouring a lot of money into it. 
and uh, and then obviously World War One and World War Two uh, also sparked a lot of the uh, funding to develop more in in the terms of aviation and and research along those lines.